Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Uh, I just want to tell you about some videos that are coming up. One of the videos that will be coming up, I'll be making real soon, is about the Eheim um, Surface Skimmer 350. Now, i just been uh, watching some videos. I heard up and watched some videos on this particular skimmer. And people have been saying they've been having problems. Uh, justifiably that they plug it in and it doesn't work. In fact, one guy did a video when he plugged it in, it didn't work. So he says, I'll be sending this back. So what I'm going to be doing is a, a video on the skimmer and I'm actually going to reverse engineer it. I th I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong, why these skimmers are not working. And I will show you how to uh, fix the Eheim skimmer. And so if you buy one, you'll know exactly what to do if you buy one and how to fix it so it does work uh, immediately and uh, what the problem is. Because I'm per it's, it's with the motor, and I know exactly probably why it's not working right. So I'll do a review on that. I haven't got it yet, but when I get it, I'll do an unboxing. I'm going to show you exactly where the problem is and why these... Uh, skimmers are having problems and we'll fi I'll show you how to fix that problem. I know exactly what's going on with these motors. Anyhow, um, I also have some white paper research papers coming up for you. This You're going to get some information on this where you have uh, heard information but did you get the right information? You know what I mean. Uh, but now you're going to get the complete information about uh, some of the things about uh, aquariums and ponds that uh, are being said, but they're not telling you the whole story. They're only telling you part of a story and then, uh, or part of the facts, should I say, not story, but facts. They're only giving you part of the facts, but from the research that was done uh, that I did uh, with the government, uh, we're, I'm going to read you some of these. I can't read everything because a lot of it has been confidentially done but I'm going to read you exactly what was found out a lot of stuff that's being taught in our universities and stuff now uh, and we better understand how things work and why they work I think that will be an interesting video for those and then there will be another video on the whole thing of uh, which will be explaining more of the anoxic filter but anyhow in this video, I thought it was going to be a good one. This is an old email I received in uh, 2004, uh, Nolan, from a guy named Nolan. Nolan. And uh, so I'll read you it. Uh, uh, Dear Nolan, just got your email. Came back from vacation. I just checked my email at the university. Thanks for sending me your questions. Right now, I am working on a Q&A about the anoxic system. I wish to include the questions that you asked me. I am spending so much time at work and school, I just do not have enough time uh, to answer everybody's email questions. Therefore, I decided to make a Q&A so I can answer everybody's questions all at once. I will be sending you a copy probably in March sometime. If you have any more questions, please send them to me, and I will add them on to my Q&A. Um, I think you will like it. And it says, uh, Happy New Year's, Kevin. Okay, so that's what I sent him. And here's what he sent me. Like I said, this is several years ago. And it says, uh, Thanks again for sending me the CD with your article. Uh, back then, in early 2000s, I was sending out basically my book on a CD. And even though I was paying for all the shipping and handling of that, and it was absolutely free, didn't cost the customer nothing, all over the world I was sending these CDs, you still had very arrogant, mean people saying, oh, that's nothing. And in fact, one hobbyist kind of stuck up for me, which I thought was pretty good, and he told one of the people who said all oh, that something, he says, well, I'll tell you what, you write a book and you put it on CD and put my name on the list as a free shipment of your book. 
if you think it's nothing. And then we'll see if it's nothing to you that this guy's going through all this expense and trouble to teach people for absolutely free and the money's coming out of his pocket. I mean, that's how, that's how arrogant and vindictive people are. When you do something for free, they treat you like garbage. And this has been happening for over 30 years. So if anybody out there thinks that I'm bitching, no people, this is a very hard road when you come out with information that people don't want to hear. That they just don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear what's what's out there. They want to hear what their friends say. They want to hear uh, what a manufacturer says. But to get the honest to God's truth, they really don't want to hear it. And therefore, they start criticizing you and beating you up. If you think this is an easy road to take, it is not. It is very hard when you come up with something. And then after they beat you up, like on forums or something like this, they laugh about it. When they finally get you off the forum, they think it's neat. They think keeping the knowledge that you have stymied is the way to go. And that's how bad a lot of hobbyists are. They are that bad. In fact, uh, I'm going to tell you a true story. Once somebody wrote on a forum that if you use a laterite, your whole pond would turn orange from the laterite. And it was terrible. And don't use it. So I found out who this individual was, and believe it or not, I confronted him. And I said, where did you get this information? Since I've been using Laterite for years and years and years and never had a aquarium or a pond turn orange like you're claiming. Well, the guy made ponds. He had a business, a pond business. And he did not want people to use the anoxy filtration system and interfere with his pond business, so he made it up. Just made it up. And this is what happens. Because people make up things. They just make it up to make something sound bad because it will interfere maybe with their business and what they're saying. And you don't think people would really do that? Well, it happened to me several times. They just make up information, they hurry up and put it on the internet like it's truth, and they have no proof of anything that they say. They have no research, no proof, but they put it out there because it's like, once it's out there, it's out there. Once it's on the internet, it's on the internet. And people will read that and say, see, see, it turns your pond all orange. I'm not going to use it. That's what he's hoping for. He doesn't want people to know the truth. And therefore, he made up a lie to cover his business so he would not lose any business. And I've seen that happen to people where they have been sold a uh, filtration system. And they were very displeased with it. And they said, well, I'm kind of stuck with it now. I have to make it work. I have too much money invested into it. And this is what happens. Anyhow, uh, going back to the letter. Um, and I finally found some natural kitty litter. Walmart carries a Balk special kitty litter brand that appears to be 100% natural clay. Well, this is written in 2004. Uh, unfortunately, Walmart does not carry the same kind as they did. I am assuming it's the uh, calcified type, but am, I am not sure. The laterite and baskets arrived last week. So I'm giving the anoxic system a try. I have a few possibly dumb questions in an effort to better understand the microbiology behind the system. My mechanical engineering education didn't cover much microbiology. Where does the nitrification take place in the anoxic system? Okay, the nitrification takes place in the entire basket or a BCP basket, the entire basket not just in the very outer parts, but in the inner parts. If you have watched my videos on the nitrification process, the nitrification process takes place further than just nitrates and we do a water change to get rid of them. Okay, so the nitrification process takes place 
throughout a BCP basket. It will take place throughout the entire plenum, if you make a plenum. Okay, so understand that. Let's see, I can't quite figure it out. On the surface of the basket, bottom of the pond, on all surfaces of the pond. And he's absolutely right with all these. It hap uh, nitrification processes will even take place um, on the sides of the wall of a pond or aquarium, on your plants, everything. Anything that the bacteria can cling to, okay, and that's uh, the bacteria are pretty well useless in their free-floating state. They have to adhere to something to start their processes. So that's why when you put a liquid bottle of something in your aquarium, they highly recommend that you turn off all filters and ultraviolet light so the bacteria has time to adhere to something. And this adhesive is done by a polymeric adhesive. And you can't see it, but it's happening. So your leaves of your plants, your, your substrate, everything is doing nitrification process. What part of the nitrification process depends on the amount of oxygen that is available to the bacteria, okay? Uh, do the positively charged ammonia molecules travel across the negative electrical gradient to the plant roots? Absolutely it does. And people think that uh, um, it doesn't, but it does. If yes, how does the ammonia avoid nitrification on the basket surface? If no, then isn't assimilatory denitrification needed to get ammonia to the roots? That's a, that's a really very good question, and I constantly have that question asked to me. Uh, in case you're new to my station, assimilatory denitrification occurs in anaerobic areas where nitrates are reduced to ammonia, obligated anaerobe heterotrophs accomplish this in oxygen-free zones. When exposed to oxygen, they die very quickly. This is known as ammonification, a form of denitrification. Okay, it is a form of denitrification. And you can understand why he um, asked this question because he wants to know, well, there's another thing that's playing across here. First of all, the ions are going into the basket. And it's just not negative ions or positive ions. It's just not those alone that are happening here, where only positives going into the basket. Because there's a little thing going into the BCB and your substrate. Okay, understand your substrate in aquariums doing the same thing. Same thing happens. And that is called diffusion, the process whereby particles of liquid intermingle as a result of their spontaneous movement caused by thermal agitation and in dissolved substrates move from a region of higher to one of lower concentration. Diffusion is fundamental way of molecules collide and react how food molecules approach cells, how waste leaves local environments, the dynamic process that helps many biological functions take place, and physical factors take place. Diffusion is part of all ponds and aquariums, whether natural or fabricated. Diffusion will exist to one degree or another in all systems. This happens with the BCB. If you make a BCB, or if you make a plenum and you're not, let's say, making a slow-moving plenum, diffusion still takes place. Even in a slow-moving pl plenum, as I've explained to you, diffusion still takes place. So with that, you're going to have molecules, you're going to have your ions still coming in. The attraction is from the crystalline structure of the substrate you are using which is why you use like a kitty litter or you use an oil dry or you use one of those baked clays like that because they have a crystalline structure that will literally attract positive ions out of the water. 
Diffusion is part of that. So that's why you can get what's in the pond through the entire basket and the basket will do 100% of your nitrification process because you're going to have different bacteria living in different zones of the basket or different zones of your plenum. That's why if you make a plenum like three or four inches, you'll have those different zones that will exist with negative and positive charges. And that's from water movement, whether it's from diffusion or whether you're making it uh, through convection or some other means. Do the positively charged ammonia molecules travel across the negative electrical gradient to the plant roots? And that is quite true. It, it does. Let's see. Why isn't the negative charge of the basket repelling nitrates and inhibiting dissimilative denitrification? Or does the CEC capabilities of the substrate actually attract nitrates? That's another good question. The negative char charges of the basket does not repel nitrates. Once nitrates are in there and they, they are attracted into the basket through diffusion, you have lots of different bacteria, facultative bacteria, that can attack that nitrate as a food source. And they can steal its oxygen or they can use it as a food source along with phosphates. When I get into one of my videos on some of the white paper I wrote, you will find out a little bit more about phosphates and nitrates. And I'm going, then, then I know once I go into that, you're going to say, wow, that's why I'm having these algae problems. And the light's going to go on your head. And because nobody tells you how to stop these algae problems in freshwater tanks, but on the white paper that I'm going to be reading, I will condense it for you. And we are going to get right to that source exactly of why you are growing algae and how you as a freshwater aquarist has to deal with it. And this even happens in all systems that if you forget one thing and keep testing for another, you may not come up with the source of what your problem is because there's a lot of bad information. We'll get into that in, an, in another video, not this one, but uh, I think you'll enjoy that video for those of you who said you want to get more into the science. Uh, when I start getting into that, I will uh, condense it and, and definitely make it so it's a lot simpler to understand. Okay. Um, the capabilities of the subject actually attract. Now, he said dissimilative denitrification. And w once again, um, for those of you who are new here and you don't know, dissimilative denitrification is accomplished by a factor of anaerobic heterotrophs that live in anoxic zones. So these anaerobic heterotrophs literally make denitrogen. Okay, so that's that's what's taking place in our aquariums and the BCB basket. It, it's taking place of oxygen levels getting low, but never being depleted 100%. Um, he also asks, uh, does the use of a UV sterilizer in the system have other benefits besides killing the free algae? And yes, UV sterilizers, I, I think I did a, a video on the UV sterilizers that they also kill and hinder bacteria. Uh, they keep your bacteria count in your ponds. That's why I highly, would highly recommend them. They keep your bacteria count low in your aquariums. Besides killing off algae cells, they will also take care of any free floating cells in your aquarium. And everybody knows that. That's why they tell you when you add one of those uh, liquid bottles of Fritzine or something like that, they always recommend turn off your UV light for a few days because any bacteria that goes next to that light will be destroyed. Uh, let's see, does the higher CEC of vermiculite offer any benefit deterrent 
to the system versus clay. Vermiculite was tested out and vermiculite caused all kinds of algae problems and especially cyanobacteria. It caused all kinds of hair, algae, and everything else, the vermiculite. And it's not quite the right substrate to use. And um, that was one of them that failed. So don't try to substitute clay with vermiculite. The poor water and permeability of vermiculite is different than clay, and therefore it reacts different to the chemistry of your water. And it, it, it just will fail. Do your baskets sit on the filter bottom or are they elevated for the extra exposed surface area underneath? The baskets uh, for a pond, he's probably uh, talking about an oxyfiltration system, or if you make baskets for your uh, sump, it's best to keep them off the bottom so you have that much more surface area on the bottom of the basket. Like when I did the baskets for the uh, ADA aquarium uh, canister filters and um, those particular baskets, water can get top, bottom, and on the sides. So they're open to uh, biological and chemical mediators. Let's see. I found, uh, I found an interesting article building a sand bed system aquarium. And uh, he wants to build such a system in his fresh water 55-gallon uh, tank with kitty litter instead of sand. Your thoughts? So this is in 2004. So right then, people were thinking of sand bed systems for their saltwater aquarium. I just talked to a guy who said he's been using a slow-moving plenum in a saltwater system for over 12 years now. And he says it's, he's been very successful with it for his saltwater aquarium. Um, once again, he's using a plenum. And what happened, what this guy's talking about, I found an interesting article because people back then were talking about sand beds, making thick sand beds, using fauna and stuff like that to keep them open. And that kind of went out of favor to very thin of just putting a sand or a, a other substrate on the bottom of these uh, aquariums. And then all of a sudden making other means of getting rid of the nitrate and phosphates by using plant matter or something in their sump, like a refrugal. So this was one thing that I found interesting that this letter is so old where he was going to start in his reefs making a sand bed or thinking about it and changing it with kitty litter and ladder. But Putting the, the, even if you use kitty litter with laterite or even kitty litter, if you're going to use that, um, you can't just put it on the bottom of an aquarium. Okay, you're going to get what I've shown in my other videos, uh, just another uh, dead end. You're not going to get movement like you want, and you're not going to get the right kind of conditions that you want when you do place something at the bottom of an aquarium. But, of course, that's still being advocated today in a lot of videos that you, they're constantly just showing grabbing a bag of, of ADA or fluo or whatever, and they're showing that all they do is just dump it at the bottom of the aquarium. And, and they even show where they just put the rocks at the bottom and dump the substrate down there, and then that's it. Put your plants in. The problem is 80% of the people are fish orientated instead of plant and they want just to have a few plants that will grow and in a lot of aquariums people don't even want live plants they would rather have plastic or or maybe have no plants at all they just want to have rocks like uh, dragonstone or something like that you know a very nice looking thing because of the particular fish they're going to have babunas or or let's say they want a tank and they're going to have goldfish or are they going to have geophagus and there's not too many plants that you know some of these fish will not eat so they're going to have to think of a different idea than just putting plants in there that are nice and edible um, you may have people that uh, 
don't want plant aquariums because they like snails. Let's say apple snails. Apple snails are nice big snails. They're neat looking, uh, but they'll eat every plant you put into your aquarium. They'll eat everything that is uh, available to them to eat. And they wind up eating all the vegetation. That's why in, in some tanks, if you think about it, like uh, wisteria, for example, you get these people that get these tanks and their whole tank is just full of wisteria. Well, really, you can get one apple snail and throw him in there. He'll, he'll munch down that uh, wisteria for you uh, very easily. They'll start munching on that and they'll eat it all up. Uh, they, they love it. So there's lots of ways to have fun with this hobby. Instead of just taking the plant and thinning it out, you can actually you know, get a, a cheap apple snail and throw it in your aquarium and they'll wind up eating every plant that is available to them. So anyhow, uh, that's it for this video. My next video is e going to be on the uh, Eheim, and I'll show you how to fix that. Because The only reason I'm doing that is because I, I did see the video and the guy was, you know, hey, it doesn't work, I'm sending it back. And he said, now I, re I realize what people say about it, it's bad. And you know what? I know exactly why it's not working. And I'll show you exactly how to fix it. Because if since we have these uh, aquariums and they're getting film on it because people are using more plants and we're trying to um, use those uh, skimmers that you connect up to your canister filters, I'll go into that during the... Uh, the video. I don't really use the ones that connect up to canister filters anymore because I had problems with them myself. Anyhow, until next time, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.